Hello again, this is Arden Kirkland with another video for week two of the D4L community module to talk about the idea of social media listening. Hopefully after the last couple of videos, you've started to narrow down which social media platforms might work for discussions among your community members. But what if your community isn't represented in the demographics of that chart about the research from the Pew Research Center? Or you think less popular social media platforms may be appropriate for what you have in mind? How can you find out more details about how your community interacts with social media? This is where social media listening comes in. Now, in a business setting, the term social listening is also known as social media monitoring, and it often involves using a variety of applications to alert marketers when anyone is talking about their company online, tracking which could be difficult for one person to do without such tools. Here's an example of one application, Hootsuite, that can help by creating a social media dashboard where you can view posts from several different platforms within one app, follow different keywords, different people or groups, etc. But in our scenarios, any tool like that is optional. You can think of this as a much more low-tech activity. When you're considering using a particular platform as a part of your strategy, you should always start by choosing a few different platforms to listen to. Based on the Pew Research or what you already know about your community or what you've learned from other guides this week. In order to start exploring those platforms to find out if they really are appropriate, you need to listen to the conversation that's already happening there. Start by searching for relevant people to follow, such as leaders in a field, or your peers who you know are interested in this topic, or institutions that share their resources related to that subject. You can also search for relevant subjects to follow. Most social media platforms have their own search engines, not unlike what you'd use for any other kind of research. You can start searching for different keywords, or in some platforms, these are referred to as hashtags, when the pound sign, called a hash, precedes the keyword so people can quickly include keyword tags in their posts for others to find later. Again, as you do with any other kind of research, let each post or person or subject lead you to others. You may notice that someone influential in the field commonly uses a specific hashtag, and that can lead you to others using the same hashtag who you also should be following. Make sure you listen to what's being said, but also read between the lines and listen to what isn't being said. Use this listening to identify your community's learning needs and figure out what you can provide that they're lacking and what platform they're most likely to use to listen to you. If you're still wondering where and how to best reach your community, why don't you just ask them? This screen shows some questions from the Montana State University Library Social Media Survey. Before you offer an instructional module, you may want to survey your intended community to ask them about their social media usage. Or, at the very beginning of a series of instructional modules, you could ask your students to take such a survey. Then you can base your social media strategy accordingly. I've made a survey for us, and I hope you'll participate in it about the social media platforms you already use and the platforms you think may be appropriate for your capstone project.